This conference will now be recorded. Hi, Ranjit. Hi, Okay. We'll give a few minutes for uh, Srini. I will log out and log in. Okay? Sure. Sure. This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, hi, Yui. Hi, Shini. Uh, as both of you are available, let's start uh, today's session. So, Randit, I've added that uh, life cycle of thread uh, with the demo also. So, uh, <clears throat> till this point, only we have discussed yesterday that is uh, for uh, book, we have a class and we are starting it by extending that with the thread class. And for uh, num, that is printing the number, again, uh, we are uh, doing this like we are starting. So two threads are there and this main is there. So when I run this, what has happened is, this is the main thread or like if I say that end of the program, if I'm adding a code like this, so three threads are there. One is a main thread, another thread is book thread and another thread is my, uh, uh, printing numbers from one to five. So five threads are there, sorry, three threads are there. So when you look at this, this end of the program is printing in the beginning itself. 
that is somewhat misleading us usually this particular statement should be coming at the last so what actually happening here is it is starting uh, three threads initially one main thread is there and uh, book thread is there and num thread is there as this book and num thread is taking some time because we purposely introduce a sleep thread dot sleep we have used and we have introduced some delay in this execution like uh, two milliseconds and uh, two seconds and uh, two seconds here so 2000 milliseconds so two seconds two seconds we have added when i purposely added it this main thread doesn't have any functionality so it is printing in the beginning itself but it is misleading end of the program so in order to avoid it is my screen visible and no you will let me share it again. Okay, now I think it's okay. good. Yeah. yeah. So now if you look at this, this end of the program is printing in the beginning itself. It is supposed to be uh, print at the end. So to avoid the misleading, how it should work? First is book thread and num thread should finish. Then only this end of the program should execute. So in order to do like this, what I'm going to do is there are some other methods available. I'm going to use that method which is called join method so what i'm going to do here is when i do this join what this main thread will do is it will wait for the other threads to continue so wait for the threads to die then only this particular print statement will come die in the sense it is a termination of the thread so we are starting the thread we are doing some activity then we are making the thread to die so now if you look at this, this end of the program is not at all printing here. It is waiting for the execution. So once this execution is completed, then only it is saying end of the program. So the purpose of join is it will wait for this particular thread to die. Then only rest of the things will go. So now coming back to the life cycle of the thread. So uh, <clears throat> there are four uh, life cycles we would say. Uh, sometimes people will say it is five and sometimes it is four but um, ideally it is like there is a new thread you have a thread creator and uh, you are making the thread a runnable that is the thread is available for me to execute once the thread is available for me to execute then what will happen it will do the activity and it will die that is it will terminate so the, those are the stage in middle there is one more stage will come which is called uh, waiting or blocked stage that is if two threads are uh, running say thread one and thread two are running due to some reason thread two is waiting for the thread one to complete so that we call it as like waiting or the block stage so what will happen is the second thread will become inactive until the first thread is uh, completed so it cannot proceed further so what it will do it is depending upon some other thread to complete so there are different methods available let me quickly share the presentation okay so that uh, can share you that program wise also you will see uh, these all methods we are not going to use whichever method which is relevant to the thread cycle will use so if you look at machine this is the new thread so once we start the thread it can directly go to stop that is it can dead directly also if i define a task like uh, in our case we were doing that uh, printing one two five or connecting to db right when i define a task what will happen is the thread will go to a place of execution that is runnable state it will go okay so once it is this is like looping kind of like running and runnable so this two together also we can say instead of making it as two different things you can make it as a single stage also new then it will runnable once it is runnable once it is executed that time also it can go to the dead okay there are some cases we will make the thread to wait okay so uh, there are two threads as i told you uh, one thread is waiting for the other thread to complete because that input is needed in the second thread so that if there are any dependency what will happen is my thread can go to a blocked stage or a waiting stage once the record thing is happening once say like thread to uh, get all the input from thread one what will happen is it will resume 
it will come back to the runnable stage then finally it will be terminated so this is the life cycle of the thread anything can happen directly from this to this can happen or from this stage to second stage and final stage can go or from second stage it will come to the intermediate stage like waiting or blocked stage that is inactive stage then it will come to the proper stage and dead or from the inactive stage itself it can go to a stop so these are the different stages and for every stages there are different methods available so start we have already seen so if you want to stop it uh, the thread you can use a stop method and if you want to make it like you are purposely making it to wait either sleep i already shown for this the blocked one the sleep concept we already covered so there is a concept called suspend wait so once it is in block stage if you want to make it again active that is make it as runnable from the blocked stage you can use this notify resume methods and all so these are the things methods available so we are going to see the stages like i already covered the stages life cycle in my code itself now i'm going to tell how it is there in my code so uh, i'm going back to my editor So one method alone I'm going to print here. That method will tell that whether we have covered this uh, transactions already or not, this life cycle. If you look at this, I have something called a book and new book. So new object I have created and uh, this book I already extends with thread. So the thread logic is already in place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the stages of this book thread. So in the print statement, the current stage of book so it is this book object using the same book object i'm going to <clears throat> call the get state so this will tell me the state so once i have created i've started this after starting what is the second stage okay the first stage or second stage and uh, then all my activities are done for this program there are three stages so <clears throat> i'm adding those stages now similarly I'm going to run this code. There are four stages I have told, right? Now I'm printing three stages in this code. The first stage is new. The second stage is runnable. Okay. So because I've used the start method and once all these executions are done, the final stage is terminated, which is called the dead or stop stage. Okay. So likewise, we can go for different stages. So this is the code where you can uh, print the uh, stage of your uh, particular thread. I will cover only one stage. I skipped it right that uh, uh, Blocked stage that I will cover along with the synchronized demo example because in that example I can very well explain it. So any doubt in this <clears throat> the life cycle of a thread Yeah, you no. just one question related to, to the when you're using thread dot sleep, right? You're using a checked exception, right? So why is it the, do we get any exceptions when we are using thread dot sleep? Yes, there are some cases if it is not working properly, the thread will be in sleep mode forever. There are two things. Okay. okay. Uh, if sleep means it is like predefined time, I'm making it to sleep. There is a concept called wait also that wait. What will happen is it will wait for the other thread to complete. Once the thread is complete, I need to get a signal from the other thread stating that, hey, my work is done. Now you wake up and you do your work. Okay. So if I never get a, a signal from the other thread, then the dependent thread cannot come into active stage at all. It will be always in the blocked state. Okay. So, okay. so that is the difference between wait and sleep. So there is a chance for exception. That's why this is a checked exception. This uh, ID itself is showing me that there is a chance that you may get an exception if it is going if it is not going correctly okay yeah thank you you're welcome your question Ranjit, is you're there, asking something? yes is there any limitation to uh, put the thread on sleep 
I mean. Uh, no, so how... keep time you can put. It's like a millisecond. See, uh, an hour kind of thing. Uh, usually in real time we won't do. What we will do is yeah. we will make something like a wait. That's what I explained, right? We will make the thread to wait for the other thread to complete. Once the other thread is completed, there is a method called notify and notify all. So that method they will call from the other thread. It will inform the waiting thread that hey, my work is done. Uh, now you can uh, become active and you can do. So uh, sleep time you can do, but the dependency is again if you are having any overall time mode for your uh, process, like your server level or something. If you have a default time mode set of like uh, uh, 60 uh, minutes is the time mode at the server level somewhere your set means that may uh, overlap with the sleep time. But this code wise, there is no restriction. But your configuration wise, if you set a overall timeout, what we will do it, it will uh, timeout this particular process. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. So now the next example is the next thing what we are going to see now is uh, the synchronization concept. And one more thing before synchronization. See, I was telling this with the uh, threads, right? Or the classes. If you want to do the same thing uh, with the uh, interface, so what is the equivalent of interface is runnable. There is an interface called runnable. So what you can do is instead of extends, you can see implement and runnable you can put. Like here I put extends thread, right? If you want to use the Interface the equivalent for a thread is in interface concept is runnable. So you can see implements and runnable and you very well know that we cannot create the instance for the interface. So whatever logic I have covered in the interfaces like using class how we can do same thing is replicable in this concept also. So don't like if, if you see some other tutorial people used to get confused. So don't think it's like for thread alone this concept is there. No. Thread also will have an interface concept. So in interface, how we will do, I cannot create the in, uh, instance for the interface. So what I will do, runnable R1 equal to new runnable, under that bracket, you will put the anonymous class. Or instead of I say that new runnable, I can very well use the name of the book itself, right? That's what we have covered. So if you have any clarification, if you need any clarification, go and check the interface uh, recording so there i clearly covered if you don't have the uh, class like if you want to go for an interface so how you can create the object for the interface so two three methods i have discussed there so any of the method you can use methods and all would be <clears throat> the stages and all would be same only like start new those stages would be same but instead of this threads you can use a runnable the interface name is runnable so instead of extends, you have to use the uh, keyword called implements. Okay. So now we are going into the concept called uh, synchronization. Okay. So why people care to go to thread concept is the main thing is you though you are very good in your um, uh, thread logics and other things you should be comfortable with handling the threads that is uh, you should not get into a deadlock stage so deadlock is nothing but say for example i have uh, two threads thread one and thread two thread one depend upon thread two it is okay but thread two also is depending upon thread one means it's like a loop so it will be a never ending process so that we call it as deadlock and uh, to avoid it the uh, recommended thing is go for the synchronization concept like uh, there is a option called synchronization the synchronization what it will do is it will uh, uh, manage your threads so you can design like you can define whether both the threads should run at the same time or one thread should wait for the other thread to complete then we can initiate so the locking mechanism like handle properly here so for that i'm going to take a simple example only so uh, your multiplication tables 
okay don't think me that i'm always taking all these max related examples but i feel that uh, uh, whether you are coming from any background in your uh, uh, college okay uh, i cannot expect all my students from engineering background or from uh, science related background so what i do is i take all the uh, school level examples so that anyone can correlate and they can understand so today i'm taking an example of multiplication table only so i have a class called table and uh, in this i have a method so here i'm going to print the table so if somebody calls that hey print me the five tables print me the 10 tables means this particular method is going to do the job for me so for int i equal to 1 so i'm not going to print it for 10 times because it is a time consuming process I am going to print this table for only 5 rows. So 5 ones are 5, 5 twos are 10, something like that. It is going to print till 5 fives are 25 only. So now I am having a for loop. In this it is going to print me uh, something like 5 ones are 5. Okay, something like this. Like 5, 10, 15, uh, 20, 25. That alone it is going to print. And one more thing what I want to do is like we are discussing about threat concept and other things, right? I want to delay this uh, uh, printing uh, for a period of like uh, uh, some few seconds. Uh, let's introduce one second delay itself because uh, introducing too much of delay will delay our uh, demo process. So I'm going to use a uh, thread dot sleep. Okay. Thread dot sleep and uh, say some one second i'm introducing a delay here so what i'm going to do is i'm adding at the signature itself because uh, i'm not going to do any logic in the catch block so in the signature i've added here and i'm coming back to this uh, demo class and inside this demo class i'm creating a object for this uh, table class and uh, so using this object I'm going to call this method I want to print five tables now so I'm going to print it okay so now I'm running it So it is started printing me 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 printed. What I feel is I want to print 10 tables also. Now, so both the tables I want to do. So I'm repeating the same thing like using the thread concept. That is uh, uh, using thread at a time I'm going to print 2 tables. That is uh, 5 tables and 10 tables. So 2 type of tables I want to print it here. So I'm going to modify this little bit. Okay, so thread either i can do like extends thread in the method or the other way so i'm trying to introduce new new way of accessing the thread so this is one among them so thread t1 equal to new thread and uh, this is that anonymous representation i told right if you are extending a class just to, to override a single method instead of creating the class you can go for the anonymous representation in the demo class itself right the same thing i'm going to do i want to override the run method so instead of extending that in the previous class what i'm doing i am using that anonymous representation in this class that is public void run method because this thread mainly why i'm calling for this run method only right so i am going to override so immediately you can see the annotations in my screen so it is going to override this one you can see in my left hand side right that is what i'm going to do here Hi. so inside this uh, run i'm going to write my code that is t dot printable again 
So try and catch have added. It is uh, showing me some error. So I'm adding the try and catch. So two threads I told, right? So same piece of code I'm going to copy. And uh, instead of calling this as thread one, I'm going to say this as thread two. And instead of five table, I'm going to print the 10 table. So two things I have created. Now I'm going to start both the threads. T1 dot. So how to start the thread using the method called start. T2 dot start so both the threads have started now i'm going to run this so now you can see the outputs are all jumbled five table printed this is 10 table this is also a 10 table then again the five table is coming to picture so my output is jumbled that is two things are happening at the same time and it is confusing at the at the same time will create the locked that uh, locking mechanism i've told right there is a chance for that uh, failure case also in order to avoid it how i can handle the the best in the interview also you can expect this how can i avoid the deadlock situation how can i handle the uh, multi threads properly so if you get a question like this is the answer is synchronization so by introducing the concept of synchronization I can avoid the deadlock situation okay so I will implement the deadlock situation but uh, before that I want to print something okay so t1 dot dead state T1 dot get state and T2 dot get state. Two things I'm printing. Okay. Now I'm changing this code. How can I introduce uh, synchronization? Is the keyword synchronized I can use? So Previously, both are in runnable. Both of my threads T1 and T2 are in runnable state. You can see at the top. Now, I have used the synchronized keyword right in my code. So now you can see Okay, I'll share it again. Just give me a minute. Is it visible? My screen? Yes. So if you look at this output, first these five tables are all completed, then only the 10 table it is printing. So by using this mechanism, we can very well avoid this uh, lock, uh, lock things like uh, you can uh, run as it is without any issue. Okay, so this is an example for synchronization. So only one thing I said I left it right. So for that I have an example written here. So I purposely introducing, so I've shown some of the methods, right, to make your uh, code uh, or it is um, wait. So what I have written is I have a code. I will share you that code now. I'll explain it. For different stages. So this code, you will get it once I share the file. For uh, lifecycle, I've created a separate code itself. So what is this happening here is thread T1 is there and uh, we are making it to sleep for uh, two seconds. Okay. And we are starting it. 
and inside the thread itself if you look the scope here it is ending and uh, we have a concept like again we are making it to sleep so two times the sleep is happening here so now finally we are printing the state of the thread so we are making so in the presentation also i have shown you what are the methods you can use for start stop uh, for this uh, inactive things everything i have shown right so uh, this sleep is one among them to make your thread uh, to go into the waiting stage okay so it is in the waiting stage time waiting because i have used a method called sleep right so it is waiting stage so this is the way you can do your code uh, into a uh, blocked stage or the waiting stage so all the four stages we have seen with the demo so new i have already explained in this multi threading thing itself uh, that is whenever you in create that particular thing itself and using the extends keyword already the thread logic in picture so it was printing new then when i started it went to the runnable if i make that to sleep it will go into the uh, waiting stage and finally after completing all the task it will be in the terminated stage so these are the different stages in a thread okay so now we are jumping into a concept called um, collections interesting topic and uh, you'll be using it lot in your uh, regular development so if you look at this so from the very beginning i was telling you something like data 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 so when you want to process the data there are different ways you can do it collections is one among them how uh, good you can uh, uh, process the data how efficiently how easily uh, you can process the data for that there are some inbuilt classes and methods are available using that we are going to use this uh, data processing and uh, based upon the need you can see that uh, there are so many things like uh, uh, when i can use where i can use so we are going to see one after the other depend upon your need say if you are uh, provided with an example that file has provided to you or the list of employees details given to you and they are telling that there should not be any duplicates then you can go for one type of collection and they say i need duplicates then you have, can choose the other thing and they said like uh, i don't want to spend more uh, 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 space for this then you can go for a different thing so we are going to see uh, the different uh, collections and uh, each collection when you can choose why we are going for that selection why we are not taking the other one that also we are going to discuss and there is a color coding also available so the blue ones are meant for the interfaces it's not like everything is the class there are some interfaces or blues are meant for the interfaces and green ones are meant for the classes and you very well know that interface you cannot create the instance so using the classes only you can create the instance and uh, you can work on it so with no delay we are going to see one after the other and i'll be explaining you how to use it in your real time concept also what are the methods available why we are going for collections is even the data process you can do manually but it will be time consumption process for you to write all the logic instead of that what you can do is you can use a readily available uh, methods that will help you to sort out all your work so now i created one new demo class so the very first thing what we are going to see today is uh, list so so collections is uh, helps in storing and processing of data based on the need uh, we can select collection uh, so collection differ in their uh, way of storing in memory or the order of storage or how to retrieve so that based upon that only we can segregate that this is array list this is linked list so basically it is like for the data processing we are using the very first thing what we are going to see today is list okay the so main idea of list is it provide the facility to facility to maintain the ordered collections order means you want to maintain some order means yes you can very well go for the list 
so it's all indexed and based to methods like uh, uh, there are some methods available but to access the method you have to follow the mechanism called index so the concept of index we have already seen in the array so same index concept we are going to use here if you have a program uh, like if you know that the length is fixed uh, the file, uh, the employee file have like only 100 employees data. If you know the length and other things, like you can go for the array concept. If the size of the data is dynamic means you can go for the array list. Okay. So two things like the difference between array and array list is already in the very beginning. When we are discussing about this, like you can take the video also somewhere related to the conditional statement and loop uh, related to that topic. I was covering the array concept also single dimension, multi dimensions and all you have discussed there. So if you know the size fixed size, you can go for array. If you feel that the employee count is going to change the size of the data, which you are going to process is going to change means you can go for the array list because you don't know, right? Uh, in a company, how many employees would be there? It's not that uh, static count. Uh, one day it will be uh, some number due to some attrition or due to some new join and other things. The employee count may vary. So in that case, what we can do is we can go for the uh, array list. So how we can do array list is we can use the like this array list. Okay. So here I'm going to specify the type of the uh, array. So what I, what type of data I'll be going to add here. This is flexible. I can specify and I can add the data. If you look at this, I know where specify the length of the data which I'm going to specify. But when you see the array concept, I used to specify like new int of in the square bracket. I was giving 5, 10, 15, something like this. Okay, so I was giving like this number but here I didn't specify I can add it on the fly and one more important thing is here I was mentioning the primitive data type kind of thing but here I'm using something called integer so if you open it it is a class it is a class which extends so the difference main difference with this is when you want to use a uh, array list not only array list other collections also when you want to specify you have to give the name of the class the argument here expected here is name of the uh, class it is not a normal primitive data type like integer and um, you, you used to give that char or something right instead of that you have to give the class name here so now if i want to add the data i can say int i equal to 1 i less than or equal to 10 and uh, i plus plus inside the for loop i have lots of methods for this array list i can add the data using the add method and index space i told right in fifth position i want to add element means i can use a second uh, thing but i'm using a for loop here so i'm going with the first add method itself but if you want to specifically add a data in the third index or fourth index you can use this particular method if you want to retrieve a data, so how you can do is like if you want to print the data which is already saved in the array list like portion number 4 or 3, you can go for the get. Okay, so there are so many things available. Now we are going to add the data. So I am planning to add the number 1 to 10 itself and I am going to print the data. So either you can do like this. I'll run this code either this way you can do or again the same for loop I can use to get the data any of this so here I'm adding the data here I'm entering the data index 
context out of bounds exception so now you got the error right index means i myself have told lot of time your index means it should start from zero okay so it will end at the so if i am adding 10 elements means though i am adding 1 2 and 3 it will be added at the zeroth position only when i want to retrieve it i have to start it from get the data at zeroth position get the data at the first position so something like that i have to give but instead of that i have started with one and i was trying till 10 that is not possible right totally i have 10 elements only so my index should be zero and less than 10 so 0 to 9 so now you can see i have inserted the data and i am able to print the data also here so this is called array list and uh, array list if you want to create for an integer you can use integer here if you want to create an array list for string instead of integer which i am highlighting here you have to replace that with string that's it so it will go to the string class otherwise if you want to give create an array list like already i employee class is there in that class two variables i have employee id and employee name if i want to create a um, array list for that that is array list means what it is a list which is going to capture the details so it can be one data or it can be the employee complete details like employee name, employee email address, whichever one I want to create. I can create a class here. I think already I have the employee class in my package. So let me try to use it here. So array list employee class I already have, right? So I will reuse the same thing. So even for a class, you can create a array list. So this is done. Now for each and every employee, if I have 100 employee, for every employee, I can add the employee ID and uh, employee name or email address, whatever I have, I can add it in my e-list and I can keep it. I can use it for my processing. Okay. One important thing is I don't need to even specify this. I can even skip it. Array list. Uh, unique list okay so some list i'm creating without specifying this what type of array list i'm creating usually this meant for identifying the type of the array list whether it's an integer or a string or employee i used to keep it so now i'm not specifying anything here so this means anything i can insert so I can add hi. I can add an integer. Okay, I can add a character also. So character means single quotes, right? So anything I can add here, I'm not specifying any type here and uh, this array list is accepting all the types. So this concept, that is a technical term also for this. Array list here, it is designed in such a way that it will accept any type based on the type specified here. Like you can add any type here and this way of programming is named as generic programming so here this array list is common if i pass an integer here i can insert an integer if i pass a string here i can use a string here if i pass an employee here i can use it for employee so the code is same based upon the argument i'm passing based upon the type i'm specifying it in turn doing the logic it in turn uh change itself okay it is not saying that it's adapting the correct word is like it adapting itself and it is accepting all type and it is working for my code so this way of coding this way of programming is called 
generic programming there is a concept called generics so this is called a generic programming so using this gen uh, generic programming you can change the input and you can start using it so these are the different ways you can uh, use a uh, array list and uh, you can add the data retrieve the data so these are the things we have told right why i can go for this when i can go for this that is if you want to maintain some duplicate data if you feel that i want some duplicate data means array list will support you so other collections won't support i will tell which collection won't accept the duplicates so here let's take an example of a list i have already created some 1 to 10 so some data was printed right like 1 to 10 so the same a list i will add some data Uh, your screen is not visible again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So same array list. I'll remove this uh, print statement to the bottom. So what I'm going to do here is. Uh, I will add a list dots so already something called ten is available, right? I will add ten again. Okay, now let me print this. So, already I have array list with one to ten. On top of it, I am again inserting ten, and uh, I am running it now. If you look at this, it is adding ten at the end, and already a ten is there, and one more ten is adding. So this is called like a redundancy. duplicate so in array list duplicates is possible if you want to have a collection which supports duplicates means you can go for the array list okay so unlike your um, what it is uh, your array array usually i used to say right a of 5 a of 3 it will print but here you yeah, you can use a methods called get set remove so these methods are readily available using the get method you can get it and uh, using the set method you can set the data and uh, using the remove method if you want to uh, remove a particular object you can do or index like at the uh, item 5 i want to remove item 6 i want to remove means that also you can do so what i'm going to do here is index position i have given and uh, so at index 6 i want to remove something so let me run this code if you look at this first it has only 10 and then i have inserted one duplicate and i gave a code of what remove the index 6 so what has happened in index number 6 i have a data because you very well know index starts from 0 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so the first things are all over at the seventh position whatever data is there is gone so if you want to remove data you can very well go for this index based operations also okay now uh, this is list one of the list we have seen there is a concept called linked list available so we will see that also what is the linked list so can So you we can we sort this array also using some uh, inbuilt function, kind of dot sort or something. Can you see? See, this is some comparative operator. Yes. Some method is available, but uh, if you ask me, when you go for an interview, if they ask that, I will give you some data, and you have to sort the data. Means don't go for array list. you better go for the tree map kind of thing the tree what it will do is it will do the sorting whatever way you add it when it uh, sort the data it will sort and sort 
so it will be easy for you so that's what i told right there are so many collections are available each collection uh do the work differently sort method is there but compared to the sort method i would suggest that you can go for the tree concept you will cover that topic right yes yes i do sure. so next thing is uh, linked list so array list we have seen it was doing like this like for the index you can add linked list it's like your data and the pointer it's a packet a data packet the first packet would be your data and second packet would be the pointer so pointer is nothing but it will point to the next node so the whole thing the data and the pointer together we call it as node so you have three nodes means every node will have two uh, packets so the second packet is meant to refer to the next node where it will point it will point to the next node and again you have this pointer right this pointer will refer to the next node the sequence will be node 1 node 2 and node 3 so this is how it is all arranged the linked list it's like linking your list so all this um, pointers it is used for the pointing so advantage here like uh, array list is also a list and linked list also a list what is advantage of linked list is, is if i have uh, in the array list i have five uh, like uh, five datas uh, and this will be marked as index 0 this is index 1 this is index 2 index 3 and index 4 that is how it is arranged for example i am removing this 30 so which is at the index 1 if i remove a element for us it's just a remove but in the background what will happen is every data should move to the previous place 47 should come to the previous place 67 should come to the previous place because the index position is changed now so previously this is an in index 1 and this is an in index 2 right now the 15 should come and sit in the index 1 position and 47 should come and sit in the index 2 position so if i have hundreds of data in my array list and if i am disturbing the second data all other remaining data needs to undergo a change it is not like only one data i am disturbing again my screen gone yeah so all the data are disturbed here but in the case of linked list what will happen is if i remove the node 2 this node alone will be removed this node 1 what it will do it will be pointing to this particular node 3 going forward the whole block this block will be skipped it will be removed and uh, instead of pointing here what it will do it will go and point it to this place so there won't be any disturbance for the rest of the nodes in my list node 4 node 5 node 5 node 6 nothing is going to be disturbed only the node 2 is removed and the reference for node 1 will be node 3 going forward that is why we go for the linked list like uh, if you remove a uh, data in the middle you need to shift the data in the till the end in the array but here the insert and delete will be fast so if you want a fast to process go for the linked list but this linked list also has a disadvantage what is the disadvantage is, is it record extra space at it stores both the data and the pointer so what it is doing it is saving both the things right so extra space is needed but the insertion and deletion is faster when compared to your array list so you can go for that and the next concept what we are going to discuss here is queue so uh, queue you very well know in day to day life uh, whatever we have done right the same thing uh, we will be doing that is you are standing in a queue so whoever is standing first will get out of the queue first 
if you want to enter the queue you can enter at the last only you cannot go and uh, uh, enter in the middle unlike we do uh, but in the real cases queue means the first person will exit first and if you want to uh, insert like if you want to join the queue you have to join at the end only so the concept that uh, the short form of this queue concept is first in first out okay so now let me go back and um, show you how we can use a queue because when i take this uh, queue concept you can see that some color coding and all i was using so array list and linked list or classes but this queue is a interface so it's a blue color shade it's there right so queue is a interface so here only i have my queue so how i can handle the queue how i can do the coding related to queue i'm going to explain now so linked list i was telling uh, uh, theoretically right it is same that's why i didn't add a demo the only change what you will be doing right the syntax wise for the linked list is however like you are defining your array list same thing you will use you can copy the code also here so methods everything is going to change uh, same so you can use it as your uh, lab practice so linked list equal to so in code you can use just to show that it's the same code i copied and pasted so linked list integer a list linked list you are using and inside this linked list if you want to add the data you can use the same methods methods everything remains same that's why i didn't add a demo so it is uh, more or less same like your array list only so in the background how it's doing pointers and all it is your java programming intelligence but you will add only one data like the integer data you will be adding now coming back to the queue concept so um, it is integer right so i cannot create something like this let me comment this code for now because i don't need this we are into the queue concept so list is over now we are into the queue So Q, it's an interface. So again, same set of uh, uh, syntax you are going to use Q, Q, and uh, equal to new Q. Okay. Don't expect. I'm sorry. sorry I'm removing this code. Okay. Thought I should not do, but still so many things are added. Oh my God. So this code won't work. That's what I was trying to prove. But uh, ID has al already added the inbuilt method. This is not possible because Q is an uh, interface, and I cannot create a instance for that. Instead of that, what I can do is I can use the class concept like we were using, right? Using the classes, you can create the uh, instance and you can do it. The same thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the linked list class. I'm going to create the instance for this queue. So now here also same thing, queue.add. So using this queue.add method, I can add the data. So using this uh, queue dot uh, remove, I can remove the data. So methods are same, but the concept is if I want to remove a data, say uh, I will add two data here, ten and uh, queue dot add fifteen. So here I've added like this, and I will print the queue also, and. Uh, I am going to remove something from the queue. Just I am calling remove. I didn't pass anything here. So no index, nothing. Again, I am printing the queue. So I have added three data. I printed the queue. I removed a data and I printed the queue. So now I am running this queue. If you look at this, this is my queue data. Once I call this remove, it is removing the data in the beginning 
so this is what i told right first in first out whichever it is there in the first position that will be removed and there is something called uh, remove and poll there are two methods available in the queue so remove what it will do was it throws exception if queue is null so if no data is available means this remove what it will do it will throws exception there is one more method available called poll so what that poll will do is it won't throw me any exception so that is like interview questions so what is the difference between remove and poll both the things will help me to remove it the data so it will help me to remove the data but in the case of remove uh, it will throw me an exception but poll won't throw me any exception at all so uh, this comparison question also you may expect in your interview and uh, next concept what we are going to see here is has set okay so So, so far I was telling, right, when you can go for array list, when you can go for uh, linked list, when you can go for queues. Now, when I can go for set. So, if you want your data to be processed without any duplicate, no duplicates is possible. Easy and fast insertion won't maintain order. So, you can go for this. Again, you have options linked has set and tree has set. Like, it will maintain the order of insertion, whichever order i'm inserting it will maintain and tree set it's nothing but it store data in the sorted order so we are going to see that example now let me comment this q code so everything will be there as a backup and uh, now i'm going to work on the uh, has set code so instead of has set uh, I can go to the sequence okay the syntax for this is has set and um, I can specify that I want to uh, use a string and I can create an object like this new has set same thing if you look at the syntax and all it will be same only but based upon the class which I'm using or the interface I'm using, it will vary. So here I can add the data. Whatever data I want to add, I can add uh, hi, hello. So I can add it. So tree set is the one I was telling, right? Like uh, where you can go for a tree set. There also the same concept. Tree set. So let me create a string and um, TS new. That's it. So here, if I want to add the data, I can add it. Uh, So I have inserted data like Abhi, Dev, and Cat. Okay, the order of insertion is different. But if you look at the data which I received, it is sorted and inserted. So that is the advantage of the tree set. So when you can go for tree set is, if you are looking for a sorted one, you can go for the tree set. So again, the link set also uh, you can use if you want to maintain the order like whichever order i'm inserting if you want to go with that instead of the name tree set you have to replace that with link to set so these are the different type of uh, sets we have and um, map is also available so 
the thing difference between maps and this thing is it is only one data we are using here right so uh, in map it is like a key value parameter okay so you can specify the key here string comma string uh, hm equal to new hash map so it is like here yeah, it's all index based or we are talking like that right so here i'm going to give some keys so either you can give like this or you can go for the classes you can give the class names and you can add it so now coming back to this what i can do it's hm dot add if i give i have to it is like put here it is put i have to use in first version i have to add something called away so it's like a key value the if you mouse over this it will clearly tell the hash map means it is a key and value you can see k and b right so it's based upon the implementation of map interfaces so uh, the map concept is available in other programming languages also the data structure concept same so in java it is something like keys and values so if you want to specify so next time when i want to iterate like if i want to print the value okay get using the key i can get the value yes still not visible it came back right is it visible yeah, or not okay so yes it is so this is the thing for uh, hash map tree map also same thing replace this hash map with the tree map and it will help you on the sorted thing okay so these are the uh, different options we have and uh, using these options we can easily uh, do the processing of data so why we are going for this thing the complete logic whatever logic i have explained here is it is mainly on the data processing based upon our need whenever we need something different whenever you want a duplicate whenever you want some sorted kind of thing you can choose a uh, proper the the relevant thing and you can go for it okay so uh, i will take five more minutes and i will complete one more topic uh, so that uh, tomorrow uh, most probably would be your uh, last session so i'll be co uh, covering all the remaining topics there so uh, the topic which i am going to discuss now is uh, garbage collection okay so partially i have covered then and there i got uh, the chance like uh, i was telling about this uh, uh, dereferencing of object and uh, it's more like a demo process because it will be asked in an inter uh, interview so it will run randomly so uh, we will see uh what is the uh, function of this uh, garbage collector is gc in short they will call gc it will remove the memory so uh, whenever a unreferenced object is there whenever that particular object is not in use then this gc will come into picture so remove the memory of the unreferenced object okay so how i know it is an unreferenced object it's like unwanted memory is this would have seen in many places uh, even in c++ we purposely make it uh, to uh, remove that memory how we will do is say for example i have a uh, object called black box we will refer that as null we will mark it as null so this topic i have already covered in the uh, strings like I opened one word document and I was explaining you a topic of stack memory heap memory concept and all I was explaining right mm -hmm. the string constant pool so there are different types of memory stack heap and string constant pool so in the string constant pool uh, 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 session okay if you have doubt you can go back and refer there I covered this memory concept so in that uh, in one of the scenario I was showing you this that is it is referring to null means it is null that is no more in use so that will be called by the uh, gc and your memory will be released and one more thing also we have discussed there 
that is this is option number one like when this uh, object will be called as unreferenced object next thing is box and box yes so i i'm just recollecting because uh, then and there i already covered this gc concept but i'm cumulatively putting everything so that you can uh, refresh your uh, concept so i have something called box red box and i created something like this so this is the three argument uh, constructor it will call and it will work so then i did one more thing called box hello box equal to new box i have some dimensions like four by six and uh, next line what i did is hello box equal to red box so if i have like this already a memory is created for this already a memory is created for the yellow box now the yellow box is pointing to red box so what will happen already created memory for the yellow box will be a unreferenced memory and that memory will be cleared by the gc okay so red box is pointing to yellow box the old memory of red box so red box and yellow box memory so the old memory whichever it is not working it will be uh, cleared out by the gc so uh, deallocated by gc next thing is anonymous object so there are some cases somewhere you can see something like this also uh, new box 4 comma 1 comma 8 so something like that if you see there is no reference whether it is a red box whether it is a yellow box whether it is a purple box so that we call it as anonymous object so this anonymous object also is eligible for the GC okay operations. So these are the different ways you can make your uh, GC functions and uh, it will clear up the memory and uh, there is a keyword so already final finally I already covered one more keyword available I told I will cover it as part of GC is which is nothing but finalize. So what this finalize will do is if you perform a task before GC remove the memory alloca like uh, allocated then you can go for this finalize method like uh, before the GC you feel that um, I want the task to be completed uh, before this uh, uh, GC come into pictures like mostly uh, it won't return any value so the return type is void only but it will perform you a task okay that's why we call it as like a finalize because finalize method will be called by the gc it's inside your jvm so uh, you can have so finally also more or less same uh, if you look at this whether you want to uh, uh, whether the try is there whether the catch is there no matter what it will execute similarly finalize if you want some piece of code that needs to be executed you can keep it under this finalize so the syntax for this is void product dot finalize so you know the meaning of product right only in my child class i can access all other classes i cannot do so that is the way like uh, you can go for this product so you can code like like closing an open file inside the finalize or any other db connection kind of things uh, you can uh, add it inside this finalize box okay so this is the overall things about your memory uh, different types of memory and the stack heap, the string constant pool, and uh, how to allocate a memory and all we have seen using a new keyword and other options we have seen, and uh, how this GC come into picture, where it will come into picture, and what is the finalist keyword and all we have covered now. Okay, so uh, yeah, with this uh, we are done with the GC. So today we have seen uh, uh, collections, threads, it will be. Uh, <laughs> little bit heavy uh, but uh, interesting topic and it will be widely used in a day-to-day -day activity uh, that's why uh, we covered all the demos relevant to it okay i took 10 more minutes yeah. of your time okay so we'll catch no tomorrow problem, but, uh, and, everything has yeah, and ranjit are you saying something yeah yeah so what i feel is the stack you linked list 